All right. Let's say she's not quite fixed yet, right? Uh, dr runs and drives, <laughs> which is a, uh, well, it's always run and drive, but that's a problem. Um, so obviously you'll note that this car is essentially in the same condition it was when we loaded it on the truck. And that's because the insurance hasn't paid us yet. So if the insurance hasn't paid us yet, I don't start the repair. And uh, it may be getting to the point where I may end up starting the repair. Now this is one of two cars. I had another car that crashed a long time ago that I had to float and I'm still floating it, uh, waiting for that to resolve through the courts. But this is the part of the business that people don't generally see, which is like the downtime. This car was, I want to say six weeks ago that this car went down and I haven't received $1 yet. So all of these parts, everything, the, the $112,000 it's going to cost to repair, I may have to lay it out and get this repair started essentially without it because spring is fastly approaching. And as the weather gets nice and I, I'm turning down rentals on Ferraris, trying to push them into the Lambo or anything else, but it's something where we got to get this thing up and running now. Definitely needs to order the front bumper. The big concern I still have is this door panel. Um, because this door panel here is essentially a special order and they sent me the wrong one last time. This looks worse than it is. This airbag swaps out, you swap the ECU, you relearn that. Other than that, uh, everything is sort of plug and play. I want to get the suspension ordered up, the rotors ordered up. This car actually has to go to a Ferrari dealership to be um, treated. And when I say treated, it's because this frame piece, and I pointed it out before, since this frame piece was damaged, which is the radiator support, uh, it does have to go through a Ferrari dealership for both inspection and potentially even repair. I'm okay with that. I don't really care who does that aspect of it. Um, but again, that's not anything to do with the structural frame of the car. That's just a, a radiator support, um, which broke off. So. It'll be a fairly quick repair once we get going, except waiting on parts. Uh, Labor-wise, this is not revolutionary. Why has nothing been done? Well, that's one of the crappy parts of the business that I have to deal with is essentially sitting on cars like this. Hold on one second. So that's one of the downsides of the business is that I have to eat the downtime. I'm never gonna be able to recover on this loss. Um, Right now, as long like, and the big issue is the repair is 112,000. He's got 75,000 in insurance coverage. Now, is it worth taking the risk in the business to, to do a rental like that? Yes. Um, I thought he had more insurance co coverage. He, he changed his policy between his previous rental and this one. But at the end of the day, I'm going to be out the diminished value and a good portion of the loss of use. Uh, the longer this sits, I can't recover any of that. Luckily, it happened in the winter. Um, would I make an insurance claim on my own insurance? No, because at the end of the day, the delta between what his insurance covers and what the ultimate uh, repair will be isn't signif significant enough to uh, essentially affect the insurance rates and, and do something along those lines. So luckily, I mean, I ordered the door already because the door is one of those things I knew was gonna take a while and I don't have to pay for the parts until they come in. So we've probably got another like three to to say six weeks on the door. And once we get the repair started, it'll happen pretty quickly, but I just want to get this thing up and running. Let's just say, what is it? By April 15th. So in about a month, month and a half, uh, May 1st by the latest, so I want to have this thing up and running so we can get it back out on the road and doing what it's supposed to be doing, which is not this, it's making me money. But just an update. I, I know people like updates. And there, there's updates on stuff like the donk, which doesn't get updated because it's like, yeah, I'll get to the donk later. The truck, I got my truck over there getting worked on. But again, if I don't have any updates, I can't, I can't prioritize that. I'm sort of cranking along in my house right now, which is going very well. Uh, and I'll provide those updates when it's appropriate. But until then, Rob Ferretti, sitting with my crash car, not really liking it so much, but it's part of the business and it's part of what you sign up for. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. 
So you guys are familiar with my other company, Adventure Drives, right? Well, this year we've got two trips coming up. One which is starting in Seattle and ending in Jackson Hole in July. That's going up through the Canadian Rockies, coming down through Banff, Yellowstone, Glacier National Park, and Grand Teton National Park. It's going to be phenomenal. Also, we're going to be going to Scotland in October. We're going to be doing Scotch distilleries, playing golf at St. Andrews if you want to do that, walking around, seeing lakes, waterfalls, driving the North Coast. It's going to be an amazing trip. Prices start as low as $2,500 per person for the shorter trip in Scotland, about double that for the longer trip in July. If you're interested in going, check out the link in the description.